everyone and welcome to our channel. My name is Gabriela Porto and today I'm gonna share with you the legal issues involving the North Sea Continental Shelf case, judged by the International Court of Justice in 1969. The case concerns the delimitation of the continental shelf in the North Sea, which is rich of oil and gas and disputed by many states of the region. It started as two separate cases, one involving the Federal Republic of Germany against Denmark and another of the Federal Republic of Germany against Netherlands. But by an order of 26 April 1968, the court, having found that Denmark and Netherlands to be in the same interest, joined proceedings. So the court decided the two cases in a single judgment, which was adopted by 11 votes to 6 on February 20, 1969. In this case, the court was not actually asked to delimit the further boundaries involved. By the parties' special agreements, they asked the court to declare the principles and rules of international law applicable to the delimitation as between the parties of the area of the North Sea continental shelf appertaining to each of them, beyond the partial boundaries in the immediate vicinity of the coast, the coast. And the arguments of the parties were clear. On one hand, the Netherlands and Denmark argued for the application of the rule of equidistance in line with Article 6 of the Geneva Convention of 1958, even though Germany was not a part of the convention. They've argued that in the absence of the agreement by the parties to employ another method, all continental shelf boundaries have to be drawn by means of an equidistance line, unless special circumstances were recognized to exist. According to Denmark and the Netherlands, the configuration of the German North Sea coast did not on itself constitute a special circumstance. On another hand, the Federal Republic of Germany argued that the length of the coastlines must be used for the delimitation. It contended that the correct rule applicable to such circumstances was one according to which each of the states concerned to have a just and equitable share of the available continental shelf in proportion to the length of the sea frontage. Germany wanted the International Court of Justice to apportion the continental shelf to the proportion size of the state's adjacent land and not by the rule of equidistance. Alternatively, the Federal Republic have claimed that if the equidistance method were held to be applicable in this case, the configuration of the German North Sea Constitution a special circumstance such as to justify the departure from that method of delimitation in this particular case. In its judgment, while the International Court of Justice recognized that it was probably true that no other method of delimitation had the same combination of practical convenience and certainty of application as the rule of equidistance, those factors did not surface of themselves to convert what was a method in rule of law. Such a method would have to draw its legal force from other factors than the existence of those advantages. So to that end, the first question to be considered by the court was whether the 1958 Geneva Convention on the Continental Shelf was binding for all the parties in the case. Denmark and the Netherlands have both signed and ratified the conventions and were a part to it. But the Federal Republic of Germany, although one of the signatories of the convention, had never ratified it and was consequently not a party. The second question was if the use of that method was a rule of general or customary international law, automatically binding to the Federal Republic of Germany. 
To that end, rejecting the contentions of Denmark and the Netherlands, the court considered that the principle of equidistance, as figured in Article 6 of the Geneva Convention, had not been proposed by the International Law Commission as an emerging rule of customary international law. This article could not be said to have reflected or crystallized such a rule. In order to be considered a customary rule, it was necessary that Article 6 of the Geneva Convention had a norm-creating character. However, Article 6 was framed as to put the obligation to make use of the equidistance method after a primary obligation to effect the limitation by agreement. Furthermore, the part played the notion of special circumstances that might emerge. Notwithstanding, there was also a faculty of making reservations to Article 6. And these matters raises doubts as to the potentially norm-creating character of that article. Furthermore, while a very widespread and representative participation in a convention might show a conventional rule has become a general rule of international law, in this present case, the number of ratification and accessions so far was hardly sufficient to that end. As regard to the same time limit, the time element, although the passage of only a short period of time was not necessarily a bar to the formation of a new rule of customary international law on the basis of what was originally a purely conventional rule, it was indispensable that state practice during that period, including of states whose interest was specially affected, should have been both extensive and virtually uniform in the sense of provision evolved and should have occurred in such a way as to show a general recognition that a rule of law was involved. Without, without that being considered, the court consequently concluded that the Geneva Convention was not in its origins or inception declaratory of a mandatory rule of customary international law enjoying the use of equidistance principle. Its subsequent, its, its subsequent effect had not been constitutive to such a rule, and the state practice up to date has equally been insufficient for that purpose. In conclusion, in its judgment back in 1969, the International Court of Justice took account of the fact that the Federal Republic of Germany had not ratified the Geneva Convention and held that the equidistance principle was not inherent in the basic concept of the continental shelf rights and that this principle was not a rule of customary international law. It remained for the court, however, to indicate to the parties the principles and rules in light of which the delimitation was to be effected. The party, in this case, the ICJ considered that the parties were under an obligation to enter into negotiations with a view to arriving at an agreement and not merely to go through a formal process of negotiation. They were to conduct themselves and the negotiations that were meaningful. So, in its judgment, delivered in 20 February of 1969, the court found that each case that the use of the equidistance method of the limitation was not obligatory as between the parties, and no other single method of the limitation were in all circumstances obligatory. They issued that the delimitation was to be effected by an agreement in accordance with the equitable principles and taking account of the rel all relevant circumstances. And the North Sea Continental Shelf case judgment left great repercussion in the international community, especially as far as the elaboration of a customary rule is concerned. The conventional doctrine of customs seems until today sometimes circular or empty. The two element theory refers constantly from one another element without being able to remain in either. The theory of custom as equity also contains no criteria for the valuation of legal relationships. 
and doubt remains until today. If you like this video, please don't hesitate to comment above. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.